Hey guys, I uh, thought I'd share some exciting news. The manuscript for my coloring book is complete. It is 238 pages, you guys. Uh, the, they've, the, the black and white images have been immortalized into a book. Um, I, I think I'm going to put it on through like KDP on Amazon. Um, this took me a, a while to do, you guys, to get the text right and the margins. I formatted it myself. Please don't at me about my, my margins and everything. It was a learning curve, and it's going to be 238 pages. It is insane. And the exciting news is that I have 109, I guess you could say, titles for book number two already. <clears throat> So I'm like super pumped. It was an incredible experience. And now I've got my little, uh, you know, my little Crayolas here. Okay. Because this is primitive. These are primitive drawings. These are this primitive art. I'm not fancy and I'm not digitally altering them in any way. These were channeled messages and lessons and visions. And I really needed those to come through that way. I needed them to come through in very organic ways. So I did not, I mean, they're going to look like they're, I think the quality looks good. Okay. For what it is, but it might look like it's not good quality and that's on purpose. That's because I scanned them in like this as is, I did not alter them like in a, a digital program. I just scanned them in and like, uh, darkened the lines on some of them like just just you know made the blacks black and the white white uh it's going to be on white paper that'll make it easier to color um the book's only going to be six by nine inches but that's because it's going to be an actual book so like I want it to be able to be on the shelf not it's not going to be like a coloring coloring book it's going to be a coloring and a guidebook so I've turned what was going to be just a coloring book <clears throat> into a into the guidebook for the deck that will come out like coinciding I'm not really sure if I should be since the manuscript for that is already done I don't know if I will upload the book first and just like get some like inkling but as it's a guidebook like it even if it is a guidebook it's what I've done is like here's like say this is the image this is the lost and found treasure then on the adjacent page I've wrote my my personal nurse note personal gnosis blurb as to like the meanings some of them ha I have lots to say in terms of the gnosis but other times they literally came down as if by magic and I don't have a lot to say it's like what it says in the title what it says on the tin you know as they say so the stage I'm in now as you can see this is I've taken them out of their big premium art book okay to scan them I'm going to start coloring and I've been uh, playing around with some colors uh, on other paper. Uh, I did some watercolor and then I did um, like this is my round table council. I did the in watercolor and I didn't really I didn't really like that. Uh, so I changed it to color pencil and I really really like this. You know I'm gonna all 110 images. I'm gonna start the coloring process now so super super fun <laughs> I can't wait for you guys to see the book super excited to have it in my hands I cannot believe that there will be like some kind of weird personal gnosis linen book out there I just with with some of my drawings I just think that that's insane <laughs> I hope y'all guys I hope you guys like it
Oh, guys, I'm so torn. Um, I, uh, I guess I'll talk about this in a second. I have finished all the images, okay? And I, I love this. Oh my God, look how good this looks. <laughs> um, but I put them through to make cards out of them. Like, you know, like the book, the synthesis, the synthesis Oracle, if I haven't said the title before, that's what it is. <laughs> the Synthesis Oracle it was going to be a guide and coloring book. And I loved the book. When the manuscript was done, I loved it so, so much that I think that I fell into this kind of discontent with these images. <laughs> Once they were colored, like I scanned them back in colored and... Uh, I, you know, I knew that I was going to like scritchy scratch the color onto the images in a naive art. That's the actual, uh, genre of art that this is supposed to be is primitive art. And once I finished them, I really loved them. I really loved them with color. Um, but I fell so much in love with the book, the plain book with the black and white images for others to color that I don't know if I'll turn this into a deck. I'll just turn this into like this just be like, like I said, my, this whole endeavor was like my consciousness in a book, in a deck. And I could keep going. I could keep going forever. And I loved them. This is one of my favorites. Oh, they're all my favorites. They're all my babies. <laughs> But I love this so much. It's called The Stranger's Fortress. And I love them so much that I colored them. I mean, like, look at this stack. All of these things are colored now. And I just, I love them so much. But I, when I put them through the program to make them into cards, they didn't look good. I am filled with trepidation about this. Like I said, this is like my... My grimoire, my consciousness in art and title, word forms, juxtapositions. Um, love this one. This one's called Of Many Tongues. Uh, it's my masquerade and an anonymity card. But there's blasphemy in here. There's curses in here. There's witchcraft in here. Um, and like, see, like, and some things form with color. Uh, like, for instance, this. In a black and white, you can't tell that these trees in this el elder forest have taken back their own. And they take a trophy of a woodcutter's axe and put it in their sap and immortalize this woodcutter's axe. But it acts as a sign against cutting any more trees down. So if you think like the trees that wake up and talk in Lord of the Rings and they're kind of angry about what's been going on to their forest, this is what I envisioned. This was a vision that I had that I'm walking through the forest and when I get to the oldest part of it, I see this tr this huge old tree that has this sap thing, uh, knot, that's filled with amber and in it is this woodcutter's axe. And you can't really tell that that's what this is in a black and white image. It just looks like an axe stuck to a tree. So you can really tell things with the color. This turned out really well, even though I did paint this in, in acrylic. Um, some of them were more colored than others. Love this. Oh, my God. Look, I even put moss on her statue because it's supposed to be a statue. Um, and it's Dawn. I really, really was proud of that. Some of them just, I mean, look, I got the tomato soup, the exact right color that I needed it to be. <laughs> this is called the poet's dinner. Um, but I just lo ended up loving the coloring book more than these ending up being cards. And I thought, you know, what if I could keep going? You know, what if I could keep, keep going and keep making books? So I'm going to show you something. So images like this, the black and white image doesn't have the damask wallpaper in the background, of course, like I did that myself. And I, you know, put the candles lit in the chandelier, stuff like that, right? Colored the chair how I wanted. But then some of the images have scenes, like with this. This is my moon dial. This was a vision I had, but all you would be able to see is this. And you can definitely tell that the, these are made of moonstone. 
these little stones in this in the moon dial uh but you won't be able to tell that it's in a in a glade in a dark like in a in a dark wood in the glade and then this you can't tell that the light is pouring in to the same glass so i don't know i'm gonna show you a notebook now to show you what i'm talking about okay so here's my notebook i take really scratchy notes um this is book two and i already did the introduction i already have all 110 titles uh the images are in another i bought another like notebook that i used for book one um and then this is book three so i'm i'm hoping to make a series out of the book uh and I, I just have so many ideas, so many images and downloads that I could have talked about and used. And I, it's, it's such a late, this has been such a labor of love, a labor through memory, a labor through synthesis. And I need them, these visions and lessons and drafts and the rafts that I've floated on through my life, I, I need them immortalized in some way, just much like a grimoire. And I think that the what I'm calling the synthesis series, uh, right now it stands at three books, which I'm extremely proud of. All, you know, I've done the introduction to book two already, started on the images for book two. Um, uh, depending on when I put the synthesis oracle which is book one out probably around Beltane then book two will probably come out I'm, I'm reaching for October to stay with that and then possibly 2025 uh, I'm shooting for in bulk of 2025 for book three but then they'll, they could just continue I mean if I really went through my memory and through this kind of past and present amalgamation I could possibly do this for all the colors of the rainbow so I don't know I might never put my colored the colored images out I might just keep them in black and white have the audience color them how they want I need the synthesis to come from me but then the audience make it their own I don't know if that makes any sense like I did all of this because it was a soul journey this has been a soul journey the synthesis uh, and Oracle and like I said drafts and and rafts and dreams and visions <sighs> they're coming from me it's consciousness my consciousness grimoire but putting it out into the world it won't make sense it will not make sense and it will terrify and confuse and you know if one person purchases it I would be utterly surprised but it doesn't matter it's like almost like I have to do it and so it's going to get done because I have to do it so it's just I don't know <laughs> I don't know I'll uh I don't know y'all y'all will see y'all will see when I announce the big reveal I guess with the book that came, that is coming out soon y'all know at least about what the series will look like but yeah so I'm going through the motions of notebooking some of the memories that I've had making sigils I guess <laughs> if any of them have a time a place or an emotion it's eclipse day the eclipse is happening in a few minutes and what was in the mail the only thing in the mail was the proof copy of my book this is book one. I've already finished book two. Um, I finished it. I have to like edit it and get all of the things done. And I want to look. I wanted to look at this proof to see how the setup will be. Um, I've already gotten a new cover for book one. I've already. Uh, I've already made a new cover. I've already. Um, I had to like edit some things out. But I thought I'd unbox this with you. It comes like this. I ordered this, the proof copy, not from uh, Amazon KDP, which you can get proof and author copies from. I haven't uploaded the book yet onto Amazon or any other platform. I 
went ahead and uploaded all of the uh, metadata and the files to Lulu so that I could get like a physical copy. I'm not going to, I'm not going to publish with Lulu, but they're good. I've, I've printed books with them before, like for my own personal use and for the proof copies, which means like a, a version of the book that I want to like mark up or, you know, black out things. Um, and see like, in a physical state what needs to get changed if anything i've already gotten like i've already revised the the interior files like four times because i'm not a perfectionist okay but again this was like the first the very first thing that i put on lulu to print my book and i wanted to just see what the physical copy of the book was going to look like and um i thought i'd unbox it with you today so that's what we're going to do so like I said, it comes like this in this little cardboard sheet. Look at that. That's the spine. It's actually a, lo a little thicker than I thought it was going to be. It looks okay. Oh, and I have um, changed the cover. This is a matte cover for paperback, but I think I'm going to change it to glossy. I don't know. I don't know yet. Uh, like I said, I am getting a different cover. I've changed some things on the cover, but uh, also this has changed. The subtitle of the book was Guide and Coloring Book because originally this was going to be an Oracle deck, but I have decided against that officially. These are just going to be... These are... <laughs> they're going to be books. They're going to be books because I fell in love with that process more so than turning it into a, into a deck. But I think what I might do is when the, I've turned this into a series and I'm not sure of how many books it'll be, but they're all going to be roughly the same size and length. So they'll all look the same. You can put them on your bookshelf together. Um, super, super exciting. Currently working on book three. So when the series is done, they'll look really good together on a shelf. All of them are gonna, like all the spines and the, the covers will look slightly different. And anyway, I just fell in love with the process of the book. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it as a book. Now what I might do is when the series is complete, I might, instead of making an Oracle deck, I might, cause some of them have uh, the archetypes of tarot, I might make a synthesis tarot. And whoever falls in love with the series of books might fall in love with the tarot deck and that might give me a little bit more of a structural edge but this is the very first prototype proof copy of synthesis oracle and i'm gonna, i'm calling it guides strides guides strides and tides and each of the books in the series are going to be are going to have subtitles like visions, dreams, quests. They're going to have like three words that are uh, together with a plus sign. That's going to be their subtitle. And let me be clear. I do not know what these books are. Uh, like I said, originally they were going to be like guidebook type books that I haven't even looked on the inside. I'm so, so super nervous. I don't know what the genre is because it's poetic, but they're not it's not technically poetry and it's art, but in terms of a genre of art, it's naive art. It's what the genre itself is called naive art or primitive art. And then I kept the images black and white instead of coloring them. Uh, I did color all of these images, but instead of putting the colored images, I thought I would leave them blank and let whoever is called, they can color them, scratch all over them, write in the margins, uh, things like that. But again, I don't know what genre this is. It's probably inspirational, motivational, uh, know thyself, big mysteries of life, big mysteries of the macro and the microcosm. I don't know. Uh, I do have dates for all three of the books that are currently going to be in the series for publication. And this I'm planning on going ahead and publishing 
in a couple weeks. So still in April, we're going to be in April when I, when I first come out with this first book and it'll be available to purchase. Okay. Look how thick this is. Now I did stick with white because this is an alchemical for the first three books, although it's an alchemical process, which means, um, I will have specific alchemical things tying into the book covers. That's why I made my own instead of hiring someone. Uh, plus I wanted my own art on the cover. As you can see, this is my synthesis elixirs because synthesis means uh, kind of like a, an amalgamation. So I chose to have put these potion bottles as my cover. But like I said, I have changed this um, cover and it won't look this minimalist. Uh, I've changed the, the, the font a little, uh, made it really look like a book cover. The back is going to stay pretty much the same. It says Synthesis Oracle, 100 plus images for the curious and perpetually lost. And if I wanted to give you a genre as to what this, the hell this book is, that would be it. Their images and their, their titles of the images are so outlandish that they're meant to confuse and to make you feel uncomfortable and to make you feel like that does not work. That does not work. And that's what I want. I wanted the, the titles to be like that. This is another reason why I didn't go with traditional publishing because the traditional publishers will probably have tried to talk me out of some of the more obscure ones. And that's not the, that wasn't my style. I can't do that. I cannot take away from the art project. I want to also warn that in terms of this naive art, primitive art that I've drawn, they're quick set drawings. I gave myself a minimum of 10 minutes per drawing um, because they are spirit channeled images. The images plus their titles uh, were spirit channeled in a way that I had to keep their abstraction and they're not going to make sense. A lot of these aren't going to make sense. And uh, okay. So, I don't know if anyone will get anything out of this, to be honest. I feel like this whole thing is my TED Talk. If I were to ever get a, give a TED Talk, it would be about doodling to uh, existential satisfaction. Doodles that help me get out of a uh, crisis of, of identity, crisis of self, and then I have rarely had those episodes with crisis of identity, but I've had major questions, major, major questions of life that have broadened me, that have expanded me. And I hope that by having this type of, I'll call it an art grimoire memoir in a book is going, I don't know, it's going to help me. It's going to help me a lot. So I like the mat. But if the second book is black, it'll hold all the fingerprints if I keep it, if I keep all of them matte. And I want to keep all three of the series so far the same. So I'm probably going to change the covers to glossy. I really hope that the body matter of this is good. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> now, one thing to help everybody. Ooh, I like the way it is. Uh, flimsy. I like that. The paper in Lulu, uh, so I've been told, the paper in Lulu, uh, which is a which is a printing company, print-on-demand company, is a little thicker than what you would normally get, like through KDP or Ingram Sparks or draft to digital so anyway. Um, so it's a little good. This book specifically is probably going to be a little bit thicker in paper in terms of a uh, GSM than what I would get from Amazon, but who knows. The way I mapped the front matter of the book out is I did a quote, a quote uh, by me, kind of about the art, and then uh, the dedication, and then the title page, and then the copyright shit, and then the preface, which is a forewarning, forewarning everyone before they dive into this book, the introduction. And the int introduction, when I reread re this over, I can't believe I wrote this. I can't believe I wrote this. It's almost like, yeah, the images and their titles and their small poetic descriptions were channeled, mess actual channeled messages and visions. Like this is a memoir of mine, a memoir grimoire, I'll say, because it's very witchy. But 
the introduction had to have been just as crazy because <laughs> I can't believe I wrote it. It is, I, I'm so proud of myself. Okay, let's just put it that way. I even have a PSA, a public service announcement about the art and how it's naive, how to use this book. Um, and then it goes right into the drawings. And so how it's laid out is there's a little of my gnosis onto the drawing. And I tell you this in the introduction that sometimes the drawings came before the titles, but then other times I would have a title and no drawing and I would have to, and I would have to sit and like meditate up a drawing that would go with these like really obscure titles. Um, this, this book one is very archetypal, very, very archetypal. It has a lot of archetype of place, archetype of, uh, psyche. So this, this book one synthesis is archetypal in nature. So you'll find a lot of the archetypes, archetypes. So anyway, this is the first one. They, I went in alphabetical order actually in all three so far I've gone in alphabetical order in terms of the titles because like I said it was going to be a deck but I've changed my mind I have changed my mind and it's okay to do that so they still will be in alphabetical order but that's because I didn't do a table of contents because then I would have had to have there are 109 images in this basically if you wanted me to put a, a label on it 109 poems plus their drawings so that would have been a page for each. And that's that you don't do a table of contents like that. Next page, next page, next page. You don't do that. Okay. So in lieu of a table of contents, I have just put them in alphabetical order. And then for no reason, for no reason. <laughs> like if you really uh, wanted to sit with one and really ruminate on its message, what it means to you. And in, t in terms of a, an intuitive thing, you could always flip. You would always know where it is because of its alphabetical order. So that's a little bit why it is. Because I really want this to be, uh, like, good for bibliomancy. And it is still an oracle. It is still an oracle. When you, when you just do this and flip to a random page, it's meant to be. It's meant to be. It's meant for you to either read the blurb that I put or look at the image. Oh my God, loneliness. I flipped to this. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting choked up. <laughs> I painted uh, an 18 by 24 canvas a while ago, years ago, of this thing that I called loneliness's incubation. And in an act of wrathful despair, <laughs> the painting was ruined, okay? Sometimes it happens like that. Your art gets destroyed. And my art, that painting just is in pieces now, okay? I actually still have them all. <laughs> I don't <laughs> And I, after destroying it, I couldn't stop thinking about the image and how I really didn't need to destroy it. Uh, so in a necromantic, sacred ritual I redrew it for this book like it it came back to life I robbed its grave to put it in this book and uh, I flipped to this image so this is it this is loneliness's incubation and there's this figure and it's nighttime and he's walking through his city but and he's feeling so lonely and he's and I'm a firm believer there's a difference between solitude and loneliness, okay? But he's so lonely, but he doesn't notice that there are other beings in his city that are just, they're feeling the exact same way. Like this person smoking a cigarette, this person in the coffee shop by themselves, this person in the window, you know, like ruminating on what they're thinking about, how lonely all these figures are. Um, basically, like inside your loneliness, you are not alone. There's someone out there that's just as lonely in that moment as you. And that's a comforting thought. <sighs> so, oh, oh my God. 
I just want to cry. I want to do some fucking magic with this. It's the eclipse. This came 15 minutes before the eclipse. I cannot believe this. I can't believe this. This is meant to be out in the world. So anyway, like I said, I've written a, a small like little introduction about symbolism and blah, blah, blah. And um, uh, I'll have to go through all this, but like I said, some of them, it's gnosis, okay? So some of them, I really poured the channeled gnosis, the poetic uh, visioning, their visionary kind of, a, kind of, their visionary in a way, kind of blurbs for each of the image. Um, you know what? Let's go back to loneliness a little for a minute. Yeah, here we go. And I'll just read you what I wrote for this. Um, some of them are going to be longer than the others. Uh, and some of them are going to be shorter because the image just came to me in quite literally a vision. And I didn't have much personal notes to share. So this is like poetry, mindfulness, ask seek be an internal seeking being an internal student it's all this in this one book like i said this is my naive art grimoire memoir that's what i'm planting for this whole series um but look i can i'm impressed with how thick this is but anyway this is for loneliness is incubation and you can color these images because it's just line art um color them write in the margins write your thoughts in the margins doodle yourself. I want you to be able to like, this is like a wreck this journal type of a experience. So again, right over here, somebody's cutting their grass. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I'm sorry if you can. So it says this image graced the surface of an 18 by 24 canvas. I painted at one time during this destructive time, the painting was destroyed. However, I couldn't get the image out of my mind. Sometimes this happens. Other times the images stick with us until a moment of necromancy is necessary. This is such a time. A lone figure walks along a moonlit urban street. They believe themselves to be lonely, and maybe they are. They do not, however, see the lonely figures lurking in other parts of their fair cityscape. So basically, I just told you what it was going to say. But if I were to flip, I really like how this turned out. If I were to just flip, actually, the very next one is very sacred to me. Okay, Every page is led up like this. An image... All the images are on the right side for you to be, be able to comfortably color it, I guess, if you wanted to, and write in their margins. This is called Lost and Found Treasure. Okay? An empty treasure chest. Because I have to think about pirates. Okay. And it says, This image, however simple, holds a special place in my heart as it was the first image, the first message I received that started this whole endeavor. This was the very first drawing I ever did for this over two years ago now. it This one started it all. A treasure chest sits on the beach, open and empty. It operates as a liminal message. The treasure was here and it's still out there somewhere. It's lost and found all in one glorious symbol. So it's like Pandora's box, Schrodinger's box, or Schrodinger's cat, not Schrodinger's box, Schrodinger's cat. It's a paradox. The treasure was in this box, in this treasure chest, but it's not here anymore. Someone either took it or it was never there and it's still out there. And it's like the quest isn't over. That feeling that like, if you were to ever get and find the treasure that's at, that X marks the spot, how sad would that be to me? I'd be like, God, the quest is over? Now what? You know? So it's almost like the quest never being done. And that's what spirituality is to me. Is there is a map. There is X is marking the spot. But when you get to that X, it's empty. The box is empty. And you've got to go on more quests to find another map, another clue. There will always be another clue. You know? I'm telling you, this is so special to me, guys. Um, like, looking at this, oh my god. Oh, yeah, I turned to one, and I'm like, that's my, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, but they're all my babies. They're all of them are my babies, and I just want to cry that they're out. Like, look at this. It's called Put Your Voice Down, and someone signed their voice on the dotted line. 
This is crazy. <laughs> really really good I like how I was able to stay within the margins that there's like no bleed area very much like look how good if you've been watching you know that I've talked about the witch's confessional look how good this one turned out like super big not grainy the blurb on this side super good and then I've got Uh, and about the author at the end there's me because everyone's like you need a picture of yourself I'm like okay and I use my YouTube picture because I mentioned in in the about the author please go please come here to the channel you know if they if anyone picks this up and they're not familiar with my channel first of all hello if you're here <laughs> hello I'm the quirky one that wrote this book uh, but also, I don't know, welcome. I w it, oh, okay, what I meant to say was that if someone were to pick up this book and not know that I had a YouTube channel, it might help them to binge a couple of my videos, get a little bit of my personality, okay, because it is out there, get a little bit of my personality, and maybe the book will make sense. Because if some stranger out there picks this book up, they're gonna be like, what in the hell did I just read? That's happened to me a couple of times where I'm like, I'd kind of like to sit and have a drink with this author because I don't know where the hell they're coming from. So <laughs> I, I'm hoping that by mentioning I have a YouTube channel, okay, that someone can find me and look up, you know, the videos, look up my personality, blah, 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 and get some really cool information about this, but really nice. very very impressed I like it a lot and I really thought the images were gonna be grainier than they are but it really does look like I just drew in this book like I like I like it was a blank sheet of paper there was a little blurb on the side and I just kind of drew with a pen in here that's what it looks like and I love that effect I really do like how I just kind of like marked it up myself and that's what I want the book to feel like to other people like was this here already? Did I do this? Did they do this? And then they take their pen, their pencil, their crayons, color pencils, whatever, and they mark it up. So, like I said, this is book one, proof copy. Proof copy. Mm, it's already changed. The Well, the cover, not the inside. The cover has changed. Um, I've got a new prototype for that coming because... I have a feeling I'm going to have to buy five of them things. And then, like I said, I finished the manuscript for book two. So that should be coming in the works. And I've already got dates set out for all of the publications uh, for them to come out this year of 2024. So, I don't know. This is just crazy. It's eclipse day. I'm feeling, you know, I've got this, like, it's not the butterfly feeling in the stomach. But it's, it's, it's a little bit more condensed. So it's right there, like, in my duodenum. It's just right there, that little, it's not the full blown, I'm nervous and I've got butterflies. It's just a little, little bitty, little bitty larva of a butterfly. Um, like this nervousness that, I can't believe this, came on eclipse day. It was supposed to take two weeks and it took, it took six days. So really, really impressed with that. The cover is, to me, a little wonky. I can tell where my image starts and the book cover begins, um, which I don't like, but hopefully I've changed the cover enough to uh, not make that relevant. I love how minimal the back looks, and I love how I was able to do the perpetually lost. I don't know, I just like that. It's like, see? I don't know, it looks nice. So, okay, whatever. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this is something that's interesting you guys. 